Thanks for staying with us on Kaduna Banditry. Justice Development and Peace Caritas GDPC is in a bid to cushion pains, restore hope to the victims of bandits' attack. Under Kaduna Catholic Provincial Archbishop Diocese, GDPC has donated relief items to internally displaced persons in Kaduna. The IDPs were victims of armed bandit attacks that forced them out of their ancestral homes for fear of being killed in the communities. The rising spate of insecurity in Kaduna State over the years has hundreds of families as internally displaced persons due to the activities of armed bandits. The recent attacks on Rubu and Kitura communities in Kajiru local government has rendered many men, women and children to IDPs. These displacements have made life very unbearable for victims despite efforts of the state government through the various emergency management agencies, among others, to support the victims. Distributing some relief items to the internally displaced persons, the JDPC coordinator, Reverend Father Joshua Archer, says the donation became necessary in order to alleviate hardship the IDPs are passing through without food, clothing, among others. He commended the unrelenting efforts of security agencies in addressing security challenges. He called on well-meaning individuals and organizations to come to the aid of the internally displaced persons. This is not only in cash, but to find a lasting way to end insecurity and promote peace. When we get reports that uh, people are not able to stay in their environment because it has become unsafe as a result of banditry and what have you, it is our responsibility to come in to see how we're able to cushion the challenges of these people by providing them with uh, both food and non-food items. Some of the victims who are the beneficiaries spoke in Hausa. They expressed their gratitude to JDPC for their efforts while lamenting the unfortunate events that forced them to leave their ancestral homes due to fear of attacks. It was in the afternoon and suddenly we saw headsmen in our community. They started shooting sporadically in the air. Many were injured. They looted our food. We are deeply worried about what is happening to us now. Bandits are disturbing us. We cannot sleep. They burnt our houses and all our farm produce. Our cry and prayer is for the government to end insecurity, for us to have peace in our nation. Truly, we are not finding it easy with bandits. They also killed our parents. It's not an easy thing for one to leave his house and stay somewhere as an internally displaced person. Items donated to the IDPs included adults and baby clothing, rice, gari, cash, among other things. Moving on, what have you heard about leprosy and people affected by it? I know, right, we've all heard a lot, but did you know that leprosy is curable and persons affected are not to be isolated? Well, a group known as Voice of Humanitarian AIDS Foundation, a support group for the persons affected with leprosy, is raising awareness on the need to do away with the old narrative towards people with leprosy. The group spoke in commemoration of the World Leprosy Day 2022. According to Minister of State for Health, Dr. Olorunimbe Mamora, about 18 states in the Federation are still endemic, with more than 1,000 new leprosy cases yearly. He explained that the number of new leprosy cases detected yearly has significantly dropped from over 7,827 in 1994 to less than 2,000 in 2020. The Voice of Humanitarian AIDS Foundation took to the streets to march against the ostracization of people affected by leprosy and loud about changing the narrative. At her office, the National Coordinator of Voice of Humanitarian AIDS, Franca Emekobum, shared the group's experiences on the field with people affected by leprosy. Even we that are even speaking up for them, sometimes, you know, it it wasn't easy for our families and our friends to even accept, you know, that <laughs> what we are doing is not, is not risky. They are even afraid to come close to me. 
they're scared. They will initially they say, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want you, you and this, your leprosy people, please. Franca maintained that discriminating against the people with leprosy in itself is a deadly disease. Already they are in pain, already they are in sorrow. We should not add to that sorrow by discriminating against them. Rather, we should, you know, come together as, you know, people of God, one nation, one love, one family. Dr. Yohen Akase is the head of infectious diseases at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Luth. He confirmed that leprosy is not contagious. With leprosy, the truth of the matter is that over 90% of people, in fact, that's a conservative estimate to be honest, but over 90% of people who get exposed to leprosy are not going to have leprosy. Okay? So yes, it's not such a contagious infectious disease in the context of how we look at contagion, that oh, if somebody has leprosy, touches you, you're going to get leprosy. In fact, it's well known that um, there are a certain, you know, for lack of a better word, genetic predispositions to getting, not everybody's going to get leprosy, even if they get exposed to that. Picking somebody who has already had a deformity at that time to keep him isolated, is, I mean, it's, it, apart from the fact that it's, it's not interrupting the chain of transmission, it has, you know, it, it, like you said, it, it entrenches the concept of stigma, denies them of being productive, being rehabilitated and getting on with their lives, living a normal life as possible. And also, generally, just, you know, doesn't achieve much, to be honest. Jim Mohammed is a survivor of leprosy. He was affected at the age of 19 when he gained admission into Amadou Bello University, but could not continue his studies. That was 1999, the first time I just detected that I was, I got a leprosy, because I don't even know that it's a leprosy before. I was just told that I have some power patches in my body. Which I was just thinking that is just be a way warm. They are calling it a las a gedomi. And I went to the some people that are selling the herbs that okay, I need the herbs for this thing, and they give it to me, and I'm using it. After using it, I don't even see any changes. That is why when my mom just took me to one Abalist, which we are calling Babalao, and the man just said that this one is leprosy. The father of three recalled how he battled with discrimination. But during that time, I have some challenges with some maybe neighbors, even in where I'm living with my mom. One of the person that, or the owner of the house, because we rented that house by then, we just said that, ah, um, this one, we have to remove, take it outside because. His father has house. Definitely, you should go to his father's house. Don't let me lie to you. My faith is not solely by then. Because I was just thinking, asking God, why me? The survivor is the chairman of the Association of People Affected with Leprosy and the PRO of the national body. He is particular about ensuring that nobody with leprosy ends up as a beggar on the streets. Over now, to buy also state wear anti crude oil theft operations by the Navy is said to have saved the country about 15 billion naira. In less than 11 months, the Adgon flag officer uh, commanding Central Naval Command, Rear Admiral Ubi Ebushulam, stated this while handing over to his successor, Rear Admiral Idi Abbas in Yanugwa. Jesse C has the details. Senior officers of the Central Naval Command and sister security agencies gathered as the Navy performed its rituals for a change of command. Rear Admiral Obi Ebuchulam has served the command for 10 months and 17 days before the recent redeployment by the Navy. The Central Naval Command made many arrests of vessels and persons involved in piracy, oil pipeline vandalism and crude oil theft. One recent remarkable arrest by the command was of MTT4. Furthermore, the command denied crude oil thieves and operators of illegal refineries, crude and petroleum products worth over 15 billion naira. Worthy of mention, too, is the command's immense contribution to security in Bielsa, Delta, Kogi, Imo, and Anambra states, particularly during the spate of attacks by unknown gunmen and during the last 
Anambra State elections. The new flag officer commanding Central Naval Command, Rear Admiral Idi Abbas, vowed to build on the successes recorded by his predecessor. I am only going to build on where my predecessor has left the fight against illegal oil bunkering and illegal refineries will continue with more vigor. My word and advice to them is they should desist. There are other means of livelihood, legal means of livelihood they can go after. If they don't desist, we will continue to go after them and we'll continue getting them. And finally, River State Commander of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSADC, has said that the command will no longer condone the destruction of aquatic lives and agro-produce as a result of oil spillages orchestrated by acts of illegal bunkering in River State. The state commandant insisted that the fight against vandalism of natural resources was not at the Greeks alone, but every identified illegal dumps in the state. The report here. Parading the suspects, the state NSCDC boss Abu Tambowal says the command is taking the war against illegal oil bunkering to all parts of the state. He disclosed that over 50 illegally refined petroleum sites have been discovered while 400 drums of illegally refined petroleum products have been destroyed in a joint operation. We have succeeded in arresting a number of suspects, trucks, buses, cars, as well as boats. They were arrested at various places at illegal refinery locations in the state. 19 suspects today for you on the parade. One Nissan Primera laden with AGO suspected to be refined at an illegal location. Tambowal commends Governor Yesom Wike for assisting the command in the fight by delegating the local government authorities to be vigilant and report illegalities. We wish to call on the state government to help the command in intensifying its fight. We have appreciated the level at which His Excellency Nelson Wike has joined hands with us to instruct the local government council and the traditional council to join the fight and they are giving us their cooperation in this regard. These suspects narrate their involvement in the criminal acts. I was sleeping. They just came to where I was sleeping and covered me. At Nivud Bobukebe, that was where they covered me and tagged me a, a bunker. When I'm not a bunker, that's just all. I got me from Akwaibo State. I'm living by Burgi New Road, by, for the compound that I'm living. So, so I just, some people, just few people come here this, this year. They just come and rent some place there to do the bunkery. So officers come, have come in. We are still sitting. When they come, they tell all of us to lie down. When we lie down, they chain us and put us from to take us to here. According to the NSCDC boss, the suspects are currently undergoing interrogation and will be charged to court for possible prosecution. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. But before we go, let's to remind you to please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiugu. Thanks for watching.